unlocking the Severn was designed to get an endangered species, the Twait Shad, back up to its historic spawning grounds up on the Welsh borders. If you have a barrier across a river like, like a weir, it acts like a brick wall, so they're trapped downstream from where they actually want to go to. So the unlocking part is literally building these fish passes on the four navigation weirs on the River Severn to unlock them, to allow the fish to pass upstream to where their preferred habitat is at particular times of year. You go back 180 years, everybody knew about the shad. And so what we want to do is to restore these historic fish back into the river where they should be. The fish will enter the fish pass and the fish pass is split up into a series of pools. Each pool rises by 20 centimetres. By the time they get to the top of the fish pass, they've risen a total of two metres, which is the height of the weir. The fish pass has been designed with these C-sections in the middle that means that as the fish work through the fish pass, they can rest if they need to before moving up to the next section. Ultimately, what we want from these fish passes is for them to make the weirs invisible. An ideal fish pass will actually remove the weir. Any fish that approaches will be able to get past the weir in exactly the same amount of time as if the weir wasn't there. 100% of fish that are seen at the bottom would be able to get to the top. And again, it's not just about upstream migration, it's about downstream migration. So one of the other things that we see is that fish that get to the top actually use the fish pass to come downstream. It must be quite a scary experience as a fish to approach the edge of a weir when so much flow going over it. And we're seeing them come from the top and come downstream. What we're doing is actually reconnecting both sets of habitat, both above and beneath the weir, and creating what is essentially one river. It's important when we build these fish passes that we understand how well they work. It's great putting all the money into it and everything, but what we really want to know is, are these fish getting upstream? This is an acoustic tag here uh, that Mark's using to detect the fish as they move up through the system and back down out again. I've come in to, to look at how these fish actually are now able to get past these weirs with these fish passes in. So it's kind of like a before and after this weir remediation. When we started tagging the fish back in 2017, we were the first people to tag Twait Shad in the UK. No one else had done it. Once we'd kind of started doing it and we'd got some successes, we were putting long life program tags into the fish. So this is an acoustic receiver. It's basically a hydrophone. So it's programmed to just pick up the pings from the acoustic tags that we have in the fish. So if there's a fish within a couple of hundred meters of this receiver, when it sends out a ping, it will detect it and we'll know that that fish is there at that point. So we've got 15 different receivers. So that's 15 different fish detected at the most downstream receiver in the estuary. And they're, they're all sort of waiting to come back into the river and we'll be able to track them as they get to each receiver further up into the river. We had a number of shad last year go up through the Diglis fish pass and through subsequent fish passes. So they're certainly getting further than they did. Time will tell whether they get further and further each year or and whether these fish that went through last year um, come back this year and go through this year or whether they do something different. Chad spawn multiple times, they come back to the same river. We never knew that, but we know that the fish are really, really loyal, but not just to the river, to specific sections of the river. And the great thing about the, the tags lasting for sort of up to three seasons is that we can see how both the population and the individual fish behaviour changes. It removes one of the big problems of tagging, which is tagging bias. You don't know what the impact of inserting that tag has been on the fish. Although we can show that it hasn't uh, affected them immediately and they've swum on and they've gone on to perform normal behaviour as we see it in the first year, what we really are interested in is their behaviour in the second and third year because they are completely untouched by human hand and that's the really interesting data of what they're doing. Now, from Mark's work uh, with the acoustic telemetry, we're able to tell the sort of catchment-wide migration of these fish, where they've got to, the impacts that the barriers are having on them. But unfortunately, we're not able to tell how well the fish pass itself works. So one way that we're able to do that is use what's called pit telemetry. Now, this other tag is called a pit tag. It's a small RFID chip. It's very similar to those that you put inside your cat and dog. Down here in the fish pass, we have nine antennas. So if a fish is to approach an antenna, when it gets near enough, it will be detected. It shows us the efficiency of this fish pass here at Diglas and how well it works. But it also tells us whether any fish that are returning are recaptures from previous years. 
From the first year of tagging that we had the pit telemetry gear in place, we were able to see within a few days that fish were going up to the pass and ultimately going through the pass and further on upstream and up to the next pass and past that stream. So overall, it's been a, a huge success and having the increase that it has had in numbers is ultimately going to impact the population in a positive way. Another thing that we did was the eDNA, which confirmed that we were getting shad DNA in the water upstream of our fish passes, so we know fish had got up there. eDNA is DNA that's, that's, that's shed into the environment, so within um, water, within air, within soil. From a simple collection of water, we can tell what species have been around in that area recently. So that's quite a useful way of us understanding biodiversity without doing sort of time consuming uh, tracking or, or sort of traditional methods. eDNA is quite a new technique to do ecological sampling. It's much more developed in fresh water, so we have a really good opportunity to work with places like Bournemouth and Hull that are also doing tagging and Unlocking the Seven that are doing counts. That allows us to ground truth that eDNA and make sure that what we're collecting is true and that the eDNA is giving us a true representation. Data is really important so that we can have that evidence to back up what we're saying or gives us that justification for why we're spending money and why we're putting resources into certain things. We kind of have a saying in this project, if you can design a fish pass that a Twait Shad will use, any fish will use it. The fish pass at Diglas has had 26 different species already use it to go upstream. It's helping a lot more fish than, than just the shad and those fish support our bird populations, they support other predator populations up the river, they support the ecosystem up and down. A healthy river is a, is a reconnected river. If the fish can move about, they can bring nutrients about. A river is a dynamic, connected place. The fish should be able to move about wherever they want. However well a fish pass is designed, it will prevent some fish from going up it. It's always our preference to remove a weir over building a fish pass. You end up with morphological processes restarting, so the movement of gravel and sediment down the system. And it's that habitat which is used for reproduction and food. I mean, fish don't want to just live in a swimming pool. They need other habitats as well, and that's what we need to recreate. Nearly every river uh, in the UK or in Europe alone has been altered in some way. Being able to return a river to its natural state before we had any impact on it at all I think would be fascinating and I think it's something that's needed for science so that we can see the vast benefit that can be had and hopefully we can move towards doing that to a lot more rivers. The work that's happening here on the Severn is equally applicable both to understanding how the fish passes work and how effective they are, but also understanding how that impacts biodiversity elsewhere as well. So it's really important work that then helps us understand and improve techniques or, or build on techniques or use the same techniques elsewhere in the world. It's fascinating to see so many people come together to work on what is one of the UK's largest rivers. Just the volunteers, the scientists, we're all working together for one overall goal of improving this river as a whole. So it's important for big projects like these to bring in loads of different collaborators and loads of different people to, you know, understand the science, but understand how people feel about their river and what they need for their river and what the river needs from them.